as a young citizen of India, armed with technology, knowledge and love for my nation. With a vision of transforming India into a developed nation, I am joining Shobhith University. What about you? Hello. Very good morning to all the participants from India and abroad. Soviet Institute of Engineering and Technology, Meerut, deemed to be university, and it's a center of excellence, center for informatics, development solutions, and applications, and center for industry 4.0 technology studies and application in association with Ardo, African Asian Rural Development Organization, New Delhi. Organize this weekly international webinar series on open source digital technology towards self-reliant India, Atmanirvar Bharat. Today is the 76th edition of the webinar series, 28th May 2022. On behalf of the Honorable Chancellor, His Excellency, the Secretary General Ardo, Honorable Vice Chancellor, the faculty members of the university, and on my behalf, and as Professor Emeritus and Chairman of the Centers of Excellence, Center for Agricultural Informatics and e Governance Research Studies, Center for Agribusiness and Disaster Management Studies, Center for Informatics Development Solutions and Applications, and Center for Industry 4.0 Technology Studies and Applications. Let me welcome our guest speaker of today's webinar, Mr. Swidit Sharma, Director and CEO, Akiko Sharma, Infotech, Sharman Group of Companies, Delhi. I wish to inform the participants and the guest speaker that under this international webinar series, these two centers of excellence, Center for Informatics Development Solutions and Applications and Center for Industry 4.0 Technology Studies and Application of the university have organized 75 lectures on various important topic. Open technologies to provision simple and economical IT infrastructure. A roadmap for students using free and open source software and reaching the goals of Atmanirbhar Bharat. Open source software in industrial IOTs for SMEs. Free and open source software adoption and business models. Open data platform for smart digital government. Technology imperative make in India for self-reliance. Data government for data governance for self-reliant India. Digital India transforming. governance and society, India's email service, citizens at indiamail.com in 22 constitutionally recognized languages, ecosystem architecture for digital transformation, education system, cyber critical infrastructure. Mr. Sharma, can you put your video on? Yes. Education system, cyber critical infrastructure, Seizing opportunities in open innovation and value creation network in the digital world for self-reliant economy. Ensuring food safety and compliance through technology, digital India, origin need for semiconductor manufacturing in India. Technology investment in agriculture value chain, role of foreign direct investment. Entrepreneurship and skill development, AI design pathways. The rise of platform economy, revisiting value chain governance. The era of automation, industrial robotics and industry 4.0, Indo-German perspective of technology transfer, skill gap analysis and opportunities. Role of artificial intelligence in healthcare, current developments in diagnosis and vaccine research. Digital agri-tech and agri-startup perspective, health informatics, network value chain, e-health system and beyond. Leveraging emerging technologies for ensuring transparent and traceable agri and food supply chain. 
unleash the power of citizen development for enterprise software development e governance models towards a sustained quality service to citizen factor by technology indian msmes to adopt industry 4.0 technology capabilities origin need for mentorship and accelerator program building public digital platform using micro services and apis health informatics network value chain early childhood development and learning health, health informatics network value chain clinical ai interface between machine learning and health informatics health informatics network value chain importance of social medicine and community health in the times of health in the times of emergency g filter gravity filter a simple low cost solution for drinking water treatment in rural india open source govtech startups empowering growth with automation digital transformation in small enterprises and small businesses of india challenges and opportunities national digital twin program need for a robust geospatial infrastructure industry 4.0 in msmes benefits of indigenously developed collabcat software from national informatics center mass serialization and anti counterfeiting solutions to fight illicit trade cyber security risk challenges and solutions intelligence approach to reduce the cyber risk new internet ipv6 root server toward atmanirbhar connected bharat indian startups reflections and policy possible policy interventions needed for scaling up to gram panchayat blockchain and crypto for digital assets platform pathway for global trade robot as a service leverage technology to solve enterprise challenges space startups connecting to international markets with emerging business models enabling technologies for future vision vivekananda secondary education and skills development mega project its potential impact on rural entrepreneurship and the rural economy in india sports grail a digital sports media platform and prospects of indian sports industry sustainability model at global level pharma 4.0 industry 4.0 applications to pharmaceutical engine manufacturing path to a digital transformation accelerate and scale non linear growth through partner ecosystems technological renaissance and the human capital a perspective health informatics network value chain medical outreach challenges and potential challenges versus potential beyond covid 19 revitalizing micro and small enterprises project management essentials launchpad for future ceos and startups founders beyond society 5.0 a new society beyond industry 4.0 and post covid 19 smart village oblique community the african iot oblique ict lessons digital economy ways and means to protect and empower for self reliance pragmatic ways for atmanirbhar bharat democratization of essential services by using sustainable energy as a catalyst transforming india through relevant education and vocational training digital technology in simplifying citizen life on learning during the pandemic and its future smart micro economic zones pathway for self reliance at village level crime prediction support system knowledge management for development partnership to achieve the sustainable development goals of un and implementing the agenda 30 millet value chain from iot to blockchain a traceability road map aspirational district program in left wing extremism affected district a successful model of data driven governance digital agriculture supply chain and the trading hub a geo economic perspective market driven agriculture need for development of crop specific strategic at strategies at a block level a open agri network to unlock the trillion dollar plus potential of indian agriculture with the small holder farmers developing rural entrepreneurship to ensure doubling of farmers income leveraging the power of convergence through connecting the dots agri startups 
agripreneurs and rural innovators agronomy and artificial intelligence equal to precision farming doubling farmers income imperative of plant health informatics network developing commercial breadfruit value chain to help farmers reach high value markets commodity value chain creation through agri net and agri ai that was on last week by andrew gavagan head of new ventures global opportunities commercialization and head growth main stage incubator of germany in australia from melbourne australia today is the 76th edition of this very important webinar series we will have the talk by our guest speaker <coughs> mr suvidit sharma this is director ceo akiko sharma infotech sharma group of companies on a very important topic farm to plate a one stop agri tech platform to simplify supply chain and e-commerce of foods e-commerce needs of food and the perishable commodities let me repeat farm to plate a one stop agri tech platform one stop agri tech platform to simplify supply chain e governance needs of food and perishable commodities four decades ago dr kurian brought in a value chain for dairy in the country which is a perishable commodities after four decades now we are going to have a talk a farm to plate a one stop agri tech platform to simplify supply chain and e-commerce needs of food and perishable commodities even though it's a well established dairy value chain a perishable commodity which which caters to only 33% of the dairy sector 53 33% 67% is still, still under unorganized sector like doodwala and mitaiwala and by 2 o'clock the milk gets spoiled so this farm to plate or the animal to plate you know there's a one stop agri tech platform to simplify supply chain and e-commerce needs of food and perishable commodities can scale up in the country very effectively we have atmanirbhar bharat the road ahead this is a vision of our honorable prime minister Shri Narendra Modi of making India a self-reliant nation, rested on five eyes: intent, investment, <coughs> inclusion, infrastructure, and innovation, and based on five pillars, namely quantum jump in economy, not incremental, infrastructure one that represents modern India. system 21st century technology driven vibrant demography demand whereby the strength of our demand and supply chain should be utilized to full capacity vocal for local and make it to global and in the third drench of atmanirbhar bharat abhiyan the government of india and you know provided 1.5 lakh crore as a booster to the agriculture sector which includes rupees 1 lakh crore to agriculture cooperative societies farmer producer organizations and startups for boosting farm gate infrastructure we have 1 lakh primary agriculture cooperative societies and about 22000 primary fisher cooperative societies in the country and primary fisher cooperative societies deal with the perishable commodity which are yet to get computerized and we have one lakh primary agriculture co- cooperative societies which only disperse money to the people and then waive the loan they never work on a value chain for the members of the agriculture cooperative society primary cooperative society and we have been now talking that this one lakh 22000 primary cooperative societies working in agriculture should be associated with each startup to make a value chain for the farmer 
who produces. They should reach to the good market and they should get the, you know, remunerative prices for their produce. And it has to be, you know, you know, it has to be a branded product which should go from the places of production. Agriculture sector is the foundation of Indian economy. It is, you know, according to Acharya Vinoba Bhave, India is largely an agrarian agricultural country, Krishi Pradhan Desh, and a country of villages, Ram Pradhan Desh, having more than 6.25 lakh villages. And hence, India lives in villages. And it employs more than 50% of the India's workforce and contributes almost 19% of its GDP. At present, agricultural livelihoods are being severely impacted worldwide over as, over as a result of anthropogenic global warming and climate change. Climate change has got both the direct and indirect effects on agricultural productivity, including changing rainfall patterns, severe drought, flooding and changes in the geographical redistribution of pests and diseases. Farmers of India are facing various problems, multidimensional problems, such as price fluctuation, <coughs> debt, and lack of infrastructure and weather. Indian farming community comprises of about 14.5 crores operational holders, out of which 85% are small and marginal operational holders having two hectares of land. Farmer needs timely, location-specific, and personalized information for effective control on their production, risk, and then market their produce to identified market opportunities. Many national-level programs, such as Digital India, Make in India, Skill India, Startup India, Startup India, have faced operational difficulties for its impact at farm level and farmer level, and that too at the small and marginal level because of the you know non cooperation at the block level and 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 i would also like to quote our honorable prime minister's speech which he gave on 15th august 2021 he said i quote in the coming years we will have to increase the collective power of the small farmers of the country we have to give them new facilities. They must become the country's pride. Chota Kisan, Bane Deshki Shah. Small farmers become the pride of the country. He also said it on 16th April 2022. I quote, India cannot afford to remain stagnant at this juncture. And it has to be self-reliant. And if people use local goods for the next 25 years, the country will not have to face the issue of unemployment. On 28th February 2016, while addressing the addressing a farmer's rally in Uttar Pradesh by at Bareilly, Honorable Prime Minister said, My dream is to see farmers double their income by 2022 when the country completes. 75 years of its independence. He formed a national task force, interministerial task force, namely doubling farmers' income by 2022. I was closely associated with two volumes as a group leader. It has got 14 volumes. The two volumes, 11, volume 11 and volume 12B. Volume 11 talks about empowering the farmers through extension and knowledge dissemination. And volume 12B is digital technology in agriculture, which has given seven mission mode programs because the present guest speaker is the CEO of a very progressive and successful IT company who is working in digital India programs, working in various e-governance projects in both in central government and state government. And this digital technology in agriculture, this the volume of the doubling farmers income by 2022 recommends seven mission mode programs for total digitalization of Indian agriculture. One is that 
you know, digitalized agriculture, digitalized digital technology and innovation in agriculture, synergizing digital India, make in India, skill India, and startup India program for transformational reforms in agriculture sector through rainfed farming, smart rainfed farming, smart irrigated farming, and smart tribal farming. Digitalized agrometa advisories and the agricultural risk management solutions. We promote open insurance ecosystem. Digitalized agricultural resources information system and micro level planning for achieving smart village and smart farming. Digitalized value chain for about 400 agriculture commodities. India has got 365 days, it has got sunshine. It produces more than 400 agriculture commodities. It produces commodities throughout the year, not like other developed countries where they are shut down for six months due to climate co climate conditions. And if all the 400 and agriculture commodity value chains are digitalized and also get integrated with the global value chain and Indian farmers will not only double the farm uh, income, but it will be 10 times of the, what they are getting now. And the so uh, fifth is digitalized access to inputs, technology, knowledge, skill, agriculture, finance, credit, marketing, and agribusiness, management, and to farmers. So it's a, it has to be a, you know, input should be made available to the farmer at their doorstep at a reduced cost, but low cost, but high quality input. And not a spurious inputs. And a digitalized integrated land and water management. And digitalized farm health management system, which is a trillion dollar data economy. It we promote that is an integrated farm health management, public health in farmer health, plant health, animal health, soil health, water health, and fish health, and environmental health. All these verticals generate data, but nobody uses this data using GIS technology on a location and try to bring in using artificial intelligence and big data analytics to find out what is happening. If this is done, then the country need not go for lockdown hereafter. It is a trillion dollar data economy. And why I'm specifying is to the Mr. Suidas Sharma that artificial intelligence and big data analytics in agriculture sector can generate trillion dollar data economy in the country. Absolutely. Awesome. And then and then doubling farmers income committee report in volume 11 talks about digitalization of cooperatives. And also, it's OpenNet and e-cooperatives is based on what I presented a paper in 2004, 2005. And this is very important for today's conference. Digital India program is, is aim, aims to transform India into a knowledge-based economy and a digitalized, digitally empowered society. And I would like to quote from two paragraphs from the synopsis of the present guest speaker. That he said, the, the synopsis says, Digital India Initiative has been the major driving force of for the budding entrepreneurs and a key contributor for the phenomenal growth of the Indian IT sector. To empower the society and build the knowledge economy, the need for tra digital transformation was felt. Digital India Initiative has been the right to push at the right time when the technology is advancing faster than ever. For the participants, I would like to tell you, I was the project director to undertake 512 districts computerization way back in 1987. 28 sectoral database development program. The seed was put on that time in 1987, which include 28 sectoral database development program. That's how the informatics revolution was brought in in 1987 throughout the country when we didn't have an appropriate technology like what we have, faster technology. We had only D-based technology. 
which is debased everything and you know and if those 28 sectoral database development program would have been operationalized with the sincere effort by all the state governments in the district level today with the technology like artificial intelligence and big data analytics india would have been a data economy nation we would have we would have drive the whole economy world economy and we lost the bus i'm still alive and the 95 i took the re recommendation of rio at summit of 1992 i had a first national conference on informatics for sustainable agriculture development and gave the blueprint it blueprint in agriculture sector to government of india from the national informatics center and then that we recommended this conference recommended three to six percent of the agricultural budget to be earmarked for it in agriculture way back in 95 15 informatics network program and that made me to have a full passion 1987 and 95 to get into agriculture system to provide technology to the rural india in the agriculture sector to make rural students to get into agriculture as a preferred option which covid situation has put it and this is how this soviet institute of engineering and technologies invited me when i was in service as a visiting professor and after my retirement as a director general national informatics center on may 31st invited me as a professor emeritus and to the university to promote agricultural informatics this is the first engineering university private university to have five centers of excellence to promote technology in rural india agriculture industry and health is very important for rural economy to prosper through digital technology we launched m tech in agricultural informatics b tech in agricultural informatics pg diploma in agricultural informatics mba in industry 4.0 for to train ceos of smes m tech in informatics and e-governance to strengthen e-governance program both in government and corporate sector private sector and public sector and the mba in e, you know agri business management this is very essential and according to the nascom indian it sector set to become us dollar 227 billion industry in financial year 2022 Registering a 15.5 per 5 15.5 percent growth, which is the highest in over a decade. And Mr. Akikos, you know, you know, Mr. Sumit Sharma says his company has an extensive experience in the IT technology solution space, with the strategic focus on the e-governance service. IT companies sincerely strive to make technology affordable and sustainable with the mission to transform business and governance through automation and innovation. Digital world, the rise of platform economy. Platform economy is emerging and digital ecosystems are essential for digital transformation in the digital world. Artificial intelligence, 5G, IoT, serverless computing, biometrics, augmented reality, virtual reality, blockchain, robotics, natural language processing, and quantum computing are the emerging technologies to have an impact in our digital transformation. In India, we have an ecosystem. We would like to bring in agriculture 4.0 and industry 4.0 and the society 5.0 to make India is a digitalized society, digitalized India. And we also have government of India is announced Amrit call led up to 100. That is a strategic plan from for the next 25 years from India at 75 to India at 100 based on, you know, four priorities interconnect all the vertical silos under P, uh, Prime Minister's Gadi Shakti, an inclusive development with my, both macroeconomic focus and microeconomic focus with a inclusiveness is very important, inclusive welfare. 
and productivity enhancement and investment, sunrise in opportunities, energy transition and climate action and finally financing of investment. We have sustainable development goals of the UN and the agenda 2030 for the future we want. It has got 17 sustainable development goals and 169 <clears throat> targets to be achieved. It provides a shared blueprint for peace and prosperity for the people and the planet and now and into the future. And the, it is a time for leveraging the power of convergence through connecting the dots, agri startups, agri preneurs, and rural innovators. It's very important. We have we have, we have got the developmental aspect from 43 startups in agriculture sector in 2013, and now we have 1,000 you know, 10 1,000 startups in 2023. And they are now able to solve agricultural problems, such as the such as the use of outdated equipment, supply chain management, lack of proper infrastructure, and the farmers unable to access a wider range of markets with ease. And agri -start startups are the need of the nations right now. A yeah, value chain development is very important as far as agriculture is concerned. It brings all the stakeholders engaged in the production system on a common platform to contribute their best while ensuring fair deal and transparency. And it is also very important that agricultural value chain has to be integrated with global value chain to reap the benefit at the earliest. And Indian Agriculture Export Policy 2008 also talks about this, that, to, that I quote, to strive to double India's share in world agri-export by integrating with the global value chain at the earliest. And I would like to quote that this webinar, webinar series of the university, we conducted two webinar series, one on Thursday, that is titled National Webinar Series on Doubling Farmers' Income by 2022. And then in Saturdays, it is titled International Webinar Series on Open Source Digital Technology Towards Self-Reliant India in association with Ardo, which has got 33 member countries, 16 African countries, and 15 Asian countries, and two are observers. And in the National International Webinar Series, we talked in about 18 talks on the importance of establishing agricultural value chain and value chain for everything, which has to reach to the consumer from the production place. And then, and if we want to, you know, and in one talk, which the, the Samunathi CEO talked on, an open agri network to unlock the trillion dollar plus potential of Indian agriculture with the smallholder power farmers. It's a very ambitious program. And an NRI from Canada, he talked on digital agriculture supply chain and trading hub, a geoeconomic perspective, leveraging emerging technology for ensuring transparent and traceable agri and food supplies. Former Executive Director World Bank, Dr. Dinendra Kumar, IAS retired, former Chairman Competition Commission of India talked on technology investment in agriculture value chain, role of foreign direct investment. Dr. Jabamale Vinanchi Arachi, former principal advisor to the Director General Unido, talked on seizing opportunities in open innovation and value creation network in the digital world for self-reliant economy, commodity value chain through AgriNet and Agri artificial intelligence. It's very important and developing rural entrepreneurship to ensure developing of farmers' income. World Bank consultant, Mr. Devishis Mohapatra talked about it. And then CEO of NAP Foundation talked, leveraging the power of convergence through connecting the dots, agri-startups, agripreneurs, and rural entrepreneurs. Lot of opportunities. 
and in the national webinar series on doubling farmers income by 2022 we talked about role of e government role of agricultural cooperative societies in e governance is very important and integrated mariculture aquaponics and precision agriculture is called mapa biofarms for income revolution by professor samuel nyana prakash vincent from manormanim sundarnar university tirunelveli tamil nadu it's very important whole india can get into the mapa biofarms and blockchain technology based fishery value chain small scale fisheries and their contribution to rural livelihoods case studies from developing countries by dr selvaraj chief general manager nabar and agriculture export management imperatives of integrating with global value chain at the earliest and doubling farmers income through integrated agriculture value chain and fisheries informatics network value chain a case study from manjar technologies last thursday in order to increase you know create an income revolution in the agriculture sector we needed to capture the entire value chain right from research to the stage where farmer are able to realize money in their pockets commodity value chain development projects are very important because these are all the one of the instruments through which market forces can be harnessed to benefit poor rural women and men not just to producers but wage earners service providers and others the project which the farm to plate mr swit sharma is going to talk it can provide this facilities you know in the state of andhra pradesh and and i also would like to have then in the indian fishery sector a close understanding way back in 1995 we announced the fisheries informatics network value chain proposal was set up sent to the government in january 1999 and 2009 there was a national workshop by the department of Fisher, animal husbandry dairying and fisheries of the ministry of agriculture to have fisheries informatics network value chain and action plan have been sent to the all the state governments and then <coughs> and now that fish being an affordable and rich source of animal protein is one of the healthiest option to mitigate hunger and malnutrition covid situation has proved it this sector has got immense potential to more than double the fishers and fish farmers income as envisioned by the government the sector provides livelihoods to about 20 million fishers and fish farmers at the primary level and almost twice the number along the value chain supply chain underpin the macro economy and global markets doubling farmers income by 2022 committee report talks about digitalized agriculture value chain in india blockchain technology become a new tool in fishery sector in helping to ensure traceability from farm to plate or pond to plate by eliminating fish fraud blockchain encourages transparency through the use of system called qr code blockchain technology enabled supply chain provides next generation solutions to achieve interoperable exchange of transaction information transaction history and transaction statements to in compliance with industry standards a huge volume of data are generated going to digitalization of records organizations have started looking towards blockchain promise of decentralized ownership immutability and crypto graphic security of data to effectively manage the security threats and achieve significant cost efficiencies and indian fish, fishing sector we have got indian fishing zones in india include on marine fisheries and inland fisheries we got about 18000 8118 kilometers coastal line continental shelf 372424 square kilometer and exclusive economic zone 2.02 into 106 million square kilometer enormous area and inland fishery zone in, comprises of 1.95 lakh kilometers river length 31.5 lakh hectares reservoirs 
24.1 lakh, lakh hectare tanks and ponds and about 18.12 lakh hectare beals, oxford lakes and derelict water and about 12.4 .4 lakh hectare brackish water area. This sector is considered as a safety net that allows for continuous food production when other sector may fail. And stakeholders include fish farmer, fish cooperatives, traders, supply chain participants and retailers. And in Assam, 95% of the people consume fish. And to, to promote the fishery sector in a big way, Government of India in 2016 announced the Blue Revolution Mission with the target to produce 15 million tons of fish by 2022 through emerging technologies in which value chain development is one of the areas. And this is, assumes more importance in view of COVID-19 issue. And the central budget 2020-21 focused on organizing 500 farmer produce organization in fishery sector and is given to the National Fisheries Development Cooperative Board rather than giving to National Fish, Primary Fisheries Cooperative Federations. Further capacity building training programs are also will be taken up on a large scale. Pradhan Mantri Matsya Sambada Yojana is aimed at bringing about ecologically healthy, economically viable and socially inclusive development of the fisheries sector in the country. We got about 21,741 societies are primary fisher cooperative societies. Challenges in the value chain in the fishery sector, development of infrastructure, logistic and cold chain support, strengthening of supply and delivery chain in demand side, NGOs, livelihood opportunity generators and cooperative societies as stakeholders in fish monitoring, identification of the product, whether it is a single product or multiple products, handholding, supported to cooperative societies and farmer produce organization to, through training and financial support for marketing of inland fisheries. Support of state government is crucial and important. Issues related to handling, storage, traceability, toxicants, certification, and HACCP. Issues regarding, cho regarding choice of spices, species. Issues regarding choice of species, appropriate technology, and pricing and economic viability has to be decided after the basic framework is in put in place and decided. Support of local bodies to overcome local mafia problems. And appropriate technology inputs will be required at pre-production, production and post-harvest and marketing. And it's, it's a very important thing because it plays in nutritional security and livelihood opportunities. And inland fisheries has got many primary issues and developing domestic markets across India to encourage domestic consumption at a reasonable and affordable cost. And but the due to higher logistic cost, Indian shrimps is much costlier in New Delhi than in overseas destination like New York, London, Paris and Tokyo. Indian fishery needs to be under a federal body for trade purposes. Fish is not a notified commodity under the APC Act of 1966. This leads to exploitation of commission agents and all commissions to be borne by fisherman himself. Interstate movements of fish and fishery products are, however, are neither efficient or modern. And this is, you know, the interstate movements of fish and fishery products are, however, controlled under the APMC Act. This needs to be corrected. And domestic fish market is neither efficient nor modern and mainly carried out by private traders with many intermediaries from between, between producer and consumer, thereby reducing significantly the fisherman's share in consumer price. This is essential to have technology linked to market rooted through organized channels pan India so as to tap the huge untapped potential lying in this sector. Hatchery, farming, input supply, quality control, harvesting and processing and marketing of aqua and inland fishery products for domestic and international is to be strictly adhered to coastal aquaculture authority protocols. And 
according to Dr. B.K. Das, Director of Central Inland Fisheries Research Institute, ICAR. Inland fishery has been a neglected sector so far. Only 40% of the retail price goes to the fisherman. Therefore, e-marketing is very important. We had a discussion on 7th October 2022, wherein the India has to have a blockchain-based fishery value chain, one for tuna from Lakshadweep Island territory and Hilsa blockchain-based fishery value chain from back, you know, back, you know, Bay of Bengal. This is that discussion we have arrived at. And then according to the former prime managing director of Fish Copet, he said that we were culturing water for both agriculture and fisheries and also culturing soil for agriculture. In the, in the, in the, from the Indian fishery statistics, he said that marine fish production is about 14.17 million tons, whereas inland fisheries production is 9.38 million tons. And post-harvest losses are 20 to 25 percent. And uh, we have to have, we have a, under the uh, Pradhan Mandri Matshe Sambada Yojana, the outlay is about 20,050 crores. And fisheries infrastructure development fund is about 7,522 crores. It, this has to be utilized. It. And we also need to have small scale fisheries. For, it's very important. And Fishnet is an emerging e governance program in India to empower fishing community and facilitate fisheries business. And I also would like to quote that the website, you know, from the synopsis from the speaker, it talks about farm to plate is one such initiative whereby we are trying to transform business through technology innovation. It is a one-stop agri-tech platform to address the supply chain and market challenges of food and perishable commodities. And the government of India also has announced fish startups as a grand challenge program. And in the month of February, on four problems, enhancing quality of production in fisheries and aquaculture sector. Enhancing quality of production in fisheries and aquaculture sector. Design and develop technology oblique solutions for enhancing the productivity so that fisher and fish farmers can achieve better price realization. Design and develop infrastructure solutions across fisheries and aquaculture value chain. Innovative branding and promotion for increasing consumption of fish and fish products. Innovative solutions for combating environmental issues related to fisheries and aquaculture. If all the seven mission board programs of the digital technology and agriculture of doubling farmers income by 2022, all these problem statements can found solutions. And we have, according to the, according to the, their uh, report, India has got about something like 63 aquaculture tech startups in India. 63 aquaculture tech startups in India. And there are about 13, which I would like to mention, apart from farm to plate. Farm to plate, Mr. Sudhir Sharma will talk about very clearly in detail. Fish chain, berry flow labs, seagrass tech, aqua connect, coastal aquaculture research institute programs, Iruvaka, C6 energy, aggregators, shrimp hoard, Megronic, Contrivance, and Anja Technology. And this much potential, I am very happy since I am associated from 1987 onwards. That as a 1987, I had a district information you know, you know, system on fisheries is one of the uh, 28 sectors. And I'm very happy to see that there are about 63 startups are working in this fisheries value chain problems and fish net, fisheries informatic network value chain is strengthening day by day. With this background, let us turn to the address by our guest speaker, Mr. Suidit Sharma, Director and CEO, Akiko Sermon Infotech, Sermon Group of Companies, Delhi, to talk on a very important topic, farm to plate, a one-stop agri-tech platform to simplify 
supply chain and e-commerce needs of food and perishable commodities. And this is an agri-tech ERP platform. And it has been operationalized in Andhra under the project code Fish Andhra. This topic will motivate and galvanize the participants watching over telecast through facebook.com, Oblique Soviet University India, or youtube.com, Oblique Soviet University in, or linkedin.com, Oblique Company, Oblique Soviet Dash University, for motivating them to get in, inspired to work through startups at Gram Panchayat level on one stop agri tech startup to simplify supply chain and e commerce needs of the food and perishable commodities. India has got about 2.25 lakh gram panchayat. And India has got about 22,000 primary fisher cooperative societies with more than 32 lakh members. Let us initiate project uh, proof of concept projects in member countries of Ardo, fisheries informatic network value chain, and agri-tech platform to simplify supply chains and e-commerce needs of food and perishable commodities. Let me introduce the guest speaker to the participants. Mr. Mr. Swedish Sharma, a software professional and a technology enthusiast, has worked extensively in the IT sector for e-governance, corporate, and overseas projects. He is presently the CEO at Akiko Sarman Infotech, offering quality IT and ITES solutions and services to the government of India. He has an excellent track record of delivering high-end software solutions and services for government of India for the past 17 years. More than 300 successfully, successfully he has have been delivered project for various central and state government machinery so far. Before joining Akiko Sarman Infotech, he worked as a software engineer in Computer Science Corporation for the clinical suit application under the Scanty Health account. Mr. Swidhar Sharma did BTEC IT from Maharaja Surajmal Institute of Technology, Delhi, and MBA codes on international business from Indian Institute of Foreign Trade, IAFT, Delhi. He has got vast technical expertise in the areas of machine learning, software as a service, cloud applications, decentralized applications, smart contract, Ethereum, Web 3.0, blockchain, and software development. With this, I will invite Mr. Swidit Sharma to talk in the international webinar series on open source digital technology for self-reliant India, Atma Nirbar Bharat, on a very important topic, on to plate and one-stop agri-tech platform to simplify supply chain e-commerce needs of food and perishable commodities. Over to you. Thank you so much, uh, you so Professor much, uh, Mugani, for, for your kind words about me and, uh, and very insightful information provided by you on the whole aquaculture ecosystem in the country that has been prevailing. I would like to thank the esteemed viewers here also uh, and uh, feel really great to be part of this initiative by Shobhit University uh, to bring startups like ours and other digital uh, transformation initiatives happening across India to this platform where we can also share how and uh, how we are trying to revolutionize the different value chains across different sectors. Thank you, sir, for this opportunity. So uh, I'll uh, before I talk about the farm to plate solution we did, I'll briefly talk about our company, our areas of services, and how we basically uh, target digital transformation and e-governance as a basic values and how we try to transform. So we have extensive experience in the IT technology space, cloud solution space, blockchain space, and the emerging technology space. And uh, we carry the mission to transform businesses, transform governance through IT automation and innovation. Our key focus has always been on the e-governance solutions. We have a vision to make a mark through digital transformation, which is sustainable and affordable, and it can be used with the masses. Some of the key highlights of the organization over the association of more than 20 years now we have delivered close to around 300 projects for the various government departments and machineries. 
uh, to talk about our services, as I already mentioned in the previous slide, <clears throat> we are into the e-governance domain. We are into web mobility, user experience designs. We are into cloud and enterprise where we modernize the legacy systems into the cloud applications. We develop the ERP platforms. We provide software as a service solutions, IT security, and so on. In the areas of IT consulting, we interact with different businesses, try to under understand their changing business needs and how the right technology solutions can be offered to them. In the new age digital transformation, we are focusing on artificial intelligence, machine learning, blockchain, low code platforms, hyper automation, robot process automation, data analytics, business intelligence as the driver towards the next gen areas in technology. For the strategic outsourcing, we are also providing manpower services and technology and resource augmentation services to the various government departments. So when we talk about digital governance, when we talk about e-governance, it's not just about developing a website or a web portal. It's much more than just a website. The key areas that we focus on are holistic transformation and growth of society towards better tomorrow, how we can use and leverage digital transformation for making government services more accessible and, transform and uh, transparent to the citizens, how to increase citizens' trust and engagement with the government, and how to create an environment for ease of doing business. So we are trying to solve these problems with the key focus on these four pillars that I just mentioned. talk about some of the flagship solutions of the organization. The first one I would like to point out would be the InfraCon portal. So the InfraCon portal is the national portal for one-click technical evaluation of infrastructure consultancy firms and key personnel for infrastructure projects. The stakeholders include Ministry of Road Transport and Highways and various state PWD departments. Here we are trying to select the right vendor for executing the infrastructure projects through this software application. Next is the Tamra portal. Tamra stands for Transparency Auction Monitoring and Resource Augmentation Portal, which we developed for Ministry of Mines. So it's a national portal where the preferred bidders, once they are allocated a block to do mining, they have to undergo a lot of clearances, like forest clearance, land clearance, so on and so forth. So in order to bring that transparency of clearances and give a window to the preferred bidders to see the update and track where his application is landing right now, this portal was developed where the complete auction monitoring is done, the complete block allocation is done. Next is the ePACE portal. ePACE is an e-projects appraisal and continuous enhancements portal that we developed for Ministry of Road, Transport and Highways. It is a complete project management solution for the highway projects. It is currently being used by Ministry of Road Transport and Highways, National Highway Authority of India, NHI DCL, and the state PWDs. Another one of our flagship solutions is the land acquisition portal developed for Ministry of Road Transport and Highways. In here, we are trying to automate the complete land acquisition scenario in India where the notifications are first read by the government department to the citizens where they want to acquire the land. And then the complete process of acquisition and disbursement of funds after the beneficiaries after the acquisition is done, the complete automation has been done in, through this platform of land acquisition. It is also known as Bhumi Rashi portal, as uh, very commonly called by the department stakeholders. Next, uh, I will be talking about the uh, ICD portal, the Inland Container Depots portal. So this is the application we developed for Ministry of Commerce. And here we try to basically uh, address the applications for setting up of ICDs, CFS and AFS. ICDs are Inland Container Depots, CFS are Container Freight Stations, and AFS are the Air Freight Stations. So for setting up those, the complete application processing system has been developed and different ministries and interministerial committees are part of this whole initiative and they uh, process the applications and give recommendations on which particular uh, particular application can be given uh, this uh, 
the certificate to be used as an ICD or a CFS. I will be talking in great detail about the farm to plate initiative in the next coming slides. Before that, I would like to point out some other projects that we have been doing. So recently we have come up with a reso portal that we call alternate dispute resolution system, where we try to digitally transform the arbitration process. And we try to make everything online with different arbiters and judges on our panel. The complete system can be driven online. No need to go to the courts. Everything can be done at click of a button very swiftly. So this portal is a, again a path breaking portal for alternate dispute resolution. We are also working in the education sector. We are providing learning management system and smart classroom systems for various schools and various universities across India. So the learning management system covers the live training, learning on demand, pre-assessment, post-assessment, live training sessions, videos, documents, certifications, so on and so forth. In the smart classroom, we provide the whole infrastructure and the smart classroom softwares where students can learn, interact with the systems for the next gen youth, the idea is. Apart from that, we are also into various kind of ERP solutions. We are partners with SAP. We are partners with IBM. We are part partners with Zoho for providing ERP and CRM services. And also, as I already talked about the farm to plate solution, uh, it's an in-house product and agri-tech ERP that we are doing. Talking about the technology areas and the technology stack we use for the web development, we are into low code platforms we are using power apps which is a microsoft low code platform we are using power automate we are using power bi for business intelligence platforms since cloud is the need of the hour because of its scalability and performance modernization we are using dockers azure aws google cloud as the platform as a services for deploying various applications we are using devops for better collaborations and continuous improvement and continuous development we're also into the full stack development of Java, Spring Boot, also main stack, no SQL stack, and so on. These are all the evolving technologies that we're working in right now. To sum up the company snapshot into a few words, these are, the, these are some of the key credentials and the key clients I've been working with. We have been uh, and the oldest vendor with Nixie. We have been associated with Nixie more than 20 years now. And uh, apart from that, we are also working with Ministry of Road Transport and Highways, Ministry of Ayush, Ministry of Commerce, Ministry of Health and Family Welfare, Ministry of Environment, Union Public Service Commission, Ministry of Defense, and various other organizations. So this was a brief about the company as a whole as we are doing right now. And now uh, I would like to talk about a solution farm to plate. I think Professor Moni exemplarily told about the complete concept just a few minutes ago and he almost covered all the aspects covered in India right now and uh, for the aquaculture sector what the government is doing for the aquaculture sector what are what the enterprise responsibilities are and what are different statistics he has rightly said all those points but I would like to reiterate them in my in my way and my vision and on how uh, and what's the current scenario of aquaculture is so I would like to present the case study of uh, Andhra Pradesh, where we implemented our solution farm to plate to address the challenges of the aquaculture supply chain. And uh, the project was recently launched in last year in December uh, by Honorable Chief Minister Sri Jagan Mohan Reddy, in which I was also there. And I can see so much, so many people coming there and so many people participating in the in that launch event and i can see the great future of the aquaculture sector there and a great initiative taken by under the fish andhra initiative by the andhra government so talking about some of the statistics of the aquaculture as professor moni has already pointed i will not take i'll not take a lot of time on these slides we can see that the fish production is on a gradual rise ever since from 2015 with a year-on-year -year growth of 10% every year. And up till 2019-20, the statistic says it is around 14 million metric tons of production in the, in the whole value chain. 
the exports are also continuously rising from 2015 till 2020 on an year growth of 12 to 13 percent every year and this shows to prove that the sector has great opportunities great capabilities great scope for the upcoming entrepreneurs upcoming uh, upcoming technology enthusiasts <clears throat> We can clearly see that inland fish production has severely outcasted the marine fish production. Inland fishery stands at somewhere around 10.43 million metric tons of production. That is where the Prime Minister's motive of creating sustainable fisheries will come from. That is the inland fisheries, not the marine fisheries. Because there are a lot of problems with marine fisheries in the sense that the catch is declining. There, there are a lot of dependencies on the weather, the water conditions and so on. Inland fisheries is a cultured way of fishing, which can gen which can uh, uh, generously uh, increase the livelihood of the of the community, and we can control it in a better way. And we can see that uh, the contribution of fisheries sector in the total economy is around 1.3 percent, and the total contribution of fisheries sector to the Indian economy is around 2 lakh crores. A lot of farmer welfare, farmer welfare and fishery welfare uh, initiatives have been taken. A lot of houses sanctioned to fisheries around for 4,500. Number of fishermen insured around 35 lakhs 86 thousand, and relief provided to the fishermen around 7 lakhs 65 thousand. So in this, we can clearly see the top five consuming states in India: Tripura, Kerala, Manipur, Odisha, and Assam. But in these top five states, the self-sufficiency is missing. These are not self-sufficient states because the state of fisheries is yet to explore its full potential. So they are dependent on other states and uh, buying produce from other states like Andhra and the rich producing states. So the mission uh, under PMMSY is also to make these states self-sufficient and reduce the dependency on other states. As we can see, the Andhra is the highest contributor to the fisheries production. And that is where we implemented our solution farm to plate. And as I'll be talking out in the in the forecoming slides, I'll be skipping the slide as I've already talked about it. So talking about uh, the aquaculture sector, the SWOT analysis, if I if I speak about, so the biggest trends that India has in the aquaculture is that India is the largest shrimp producer in the world. India is the second largest producer of fishes. The growth in aquaculture of India has been really, really good. The annual growth rate of 10% year on year is, is, is amazing. The fishes have the highest value of nutrition, highest protein content among all animal foods. There, is an, there has been an improvement in the acceptability of Indian origin seafood. Whereas earlier, five years before, this was not the scenario. There has been a great improvement because the quality standards are also improving now. There are a lot of new scientific and modern fish farming systems now available, such as bioflock, aquaponics, recirculatory aquaculture systems, which basically use bacteria to convert ammonia to nitrates and improve the water quality. So these technologies are really helping the fishermen and farmers and the fish farmers use this bacteria and these plant technologies to make the water more conducive for fish growth. Also, not but the least, uh, polyculture, fish farming in sea bass cage cultures are also upcoming technology areas. Conditions are very favorable for aquaculture farming in India. Availability of water resources, weather conditions are very favorable. Establishment, established fishing industry with wide variety of species is also available here. And uh, now there is a well-established export supply chain and good storage facilities on the rise although i will say that it is not completely fulfilling the purpose but it's definitely on the rise the processing and transport infrastructure is also improving and today aquaculture has become an absolute necessity in order to meet the global demand for seafood it is a very important point it is an absolute necessity and india must focus on harnessing the aquaculture technologies and scientific discoveries to improve our agriculture sector and we have huge potential as a country not but talking about the strengths now we talk about the weaknesses they are also prevailing a lot 
as uh, professor moni already pointed out the rural farmers lack proper infrastructure ponds inputs credit facilities by the finance financial institutes prop lack of proper training literacy digital literacy education for carrying out fish culture there is a poor leasing policy weak research extension linkages poor cooperation among operational agencies and there is an ambivalence towards involvement of women women are still not part of the ecosystem after so many years and a big uh, driving force is still sitting in homes which has to be corrected there is a lack of testing facilities uh, the farmers do not know about the testing facilities the water testing facilities the input facilities a lot of uh, scenarios the new farmers who want to start aqua aquaculture and aqua farming are not provided any proper information there is no common portal where information dissemination could be done to them so they are facing a lot of challenges on ground then there is a high established establishment cost resulting in high unit cost of production and, and poor capacity levels here there is a high price uncertainty high perishability lot of spoilages lot of wastages because this sec- because the fishing the fishes typical life cycle it cannot survive beyond 5 days only if it is kept under very good conditions of minus 4 degrees celsius it can be survived otherwise it's it's highly perishable so there are big price uncertainty and quality uncertainty problems the also there's the increase in the labor cost and demand is also on the rise the labor is becoming more expensive adding to the costs safety standards are not set up properly on the factory levels again a problem big problem indian states as i already pointed are not still self sufficient they are highly dependent on a lot of other factors also the general hygienic conditions in which the fisheries sector is actually working are not of the international standard so even in spite of having all the uh, possibilities all the available all the things available with us all the resources available with us we still not exploring the true potential of the sector as a whole so talking about the opportunities that we have uh, in india so the growth of aquaculture is absolutely mandatory because overfishing in the marine sector has created a great environmental hazard and a great ecological imbalance that is why it is very important to move towards the inland fisheries which is a great potential that india has india is a top producer of seafood in the world india has increased their commodity di- diversification and high value aquaculture produce like ornamental fisheries high value prawn culture so on and has been the major strength achieved over the years there has been a widespread international acceptance of indian quality now which was not there earlier there are big market opportunities coming from middle east uae china and east african countries east asian countries sorry then the certified factories are also now coming up iso certified brc certified food compliance certified factories shipment connectivity to the most destinations from india is now available exploring the tuna fishing culture is now on the rise and under the prime minister's direction of pmmsy 20500 crores of fund has been allocated for the next 5 years to grow the fisheries sector with the government focusing on adoption of sustainable fishing practices for boosting the farmer and fisherman welfare for process modernization systematics and strategic enhancement of production and productivity infusion of technology quality improvement of seed and feed value addition at various levels species diversification inclusive policies and regulatory frameworks are also being arranged to boost in both domestic consumption and exports these are the opportunities in the sector available so some of the aims of the pmmsy harnessing of fisheries potentially in a sustainable i again point out the word sustainable because that is what the mantra of success in aquaculture would be in the coming time responsible inclusive and equitable enhancing of fish productions so the biggest fish producer andhra is the only one thriving the other states are still having very low levels of fish production and the pre harvest problems that these other states face is huge so so under the pmmsy there is a vision to increase production in various states in different states so the third point here the modernization and strengthening of the value chain post harvest management and quality management 
this is the point where we have come into the picture with our solution farm to plate we are modernizing and strengthening the value chain the post harvest management and the quality improvement another agenda is to doubling the fishers and farmers income and generation of employment in the coming years enhancing contribution of aquaculture in the agriculture gross value it is added social physical economic security for fishers and fish farmers and robust fisher fisheries management and regulatory framework are the need of the hours under the pmmsy aims some of the top activities being covered in pmmsy are development of good quality hatcheries construction of grow out and rearing ponds development of new scientific methodologies like ras recirculatory aquaculture cage culture construction of raceways for trout farming ornamental and recre recreational fisheries support of acquisition of deep sea fishing vessels upgrade upgradation of existing fishing vessels support of providing safety kits for fishermen because safety hazards are huge in this sector and uh, pmsy also supports for construction of cold storages the farmers are suffering a lot because of the inavailability of cold storages and the lot of harvest gets wasted ice plants fish meal plants construction of fish retail markets kiosks fish value added enterprise units e platform e trading platform e marketing channels establishment of disease diagnostics and quality testing labs insurance and credit facilities to the fishermen and farmers for the local community and so on i've already pointed out the negatives the challenges that uh, have been faced in this sector this so apart from that there a lot of over exploitation lot of uh, unsustainable fishing practices happening across there is a decline in the marine fish catch over supply of aquaculture produced throughout the world incidents of alerts and rejections because of quality issues so on and so forth so that was a picture of the current aquaculture scenario in india what were the problems what were the strengths and what were the opportunities available in the aquaculture sector next i would talk about some of the typical problems that we have tried to address with our solution obviously it is a big it is a big sector we have tried to only it's just a step that we have taken we have tried to address a few issues here not all can be covered through one platform in the next phase we are planning to cover other problems that that are faced in the sector the typical problems are like the farmer faces the volatile price and demand he doesn't have a clear indication of the harvest needs he doesn't get the right price at the right time there is an inefficient supply chain distribution issues leading to a lot of spoilages and fuel wastages to in, in order to solve this we have create we have created a complete platform where we are providing market linkages to the farmer to the digital initiative where they get get access to the different hubs they get access to the different retailers and obviously they are getting better price because of that in order to solve the supply chain problems we have used the technology of root optimization when the when the hubs basically interact with the farmers and they collect the harvest we are using google google map apis where the transporter goes through the api and with minimum distance and minimum time catches the maximum amount of harvest from the farmers and delivers it to the hub we are saving time on that and tackling the spoilage issues in the in the whole value chain so for the farmer we have provided the farmer mobile app where he can input the information about the harvest of across different species when the farmer enters this data into the farmer app the various hubs who are nearby to the farmers they get the notification that the so and so so much so much harvest is ready with the farmer they assign the procurement officer they assign the transport officer the fleet management officer they go to the farm gate collect the produce from the farmer make the payment everything is handled online invoicing is handled online you can track track the fleet real time there's a complete fleet management system you can track how much harvest has been collected from different farmers you can track that on real time and after that it reaches the hub the hub has all the mechanism for procurement for inventory for quality control for sales 
and he also has the business intelligence dashboards from which he can monitor how much procurement he is doing what are the current inventory levels how much sale is happening so a complete erp platform is provided to these hubs which is helping them a lot they are getting a very clear visibility the basic problem that hub solves is a demand supply problem from the retailers they get orders they understand the demand that is coming from the retailers and they understand the supply that is available with the farmers on one platform on one dashboard they are able to see all the sides and take a informed decision the retailers are provided with the pos app point of sales app so there are different kind of retailers that we are trying to address one are the small retailers small shops where uh, the people go go to the shop and they purchase the produce directly from the shop so there is a pos app then there are mid sized retailers that are that also have the kitchen facilities available with them so they have both the pos app option and a b2c e-commerce platform which they have which the consumers can use to purchase so as you can see we are trying to unify the whole value chain from farmers to the hubs warehouses to these retailers and from retailers to the end consumers the complete process has been streamlined the retailers can track the quality of the produce being provided by the farmer they can trace the produce produce both the retailer and the consumer they can trace the produce to the farmer what were the temperature levels what were the ph levels when the fish was harvested how it was sent to the hubs at every point the quality parameters are being checked and the intelligence system captures all this information and shows to the retailers and consumers so that trust is enabled and they can be confident when they purchase through the platform for the overall management the governance bodies in andhra pradesh we are providing government government dashboard for where from where they can track the whole solution all the procurements that are happening all the sales that are happening all the inventories that are happening who are the farmers registered who are the retailers registered what are the top top performing districts what are the top performing hubs so they can have the complete statistics and business intelligence at their disposal on the platform so completely digital platform all the has hassles have been simplified to an extent that can we can only say that it's a step towards transforming the sector there are a lot of other issues also of course that we are yet to solve that i will be covering in the later slides all in all we are trying to organize the highly unorganized sector by digitizing the farmers digitizing the fishermen and digitizing the different stakeholders in the districts in andhra pradesh we are trying to address the traceability concern from farm to fork as moni sir rightly said about the qr codes and blockchain and iot technologies being used for traceability we are also trying to use these similar technologies to bring in traceability into the whole ecosystem till now there has no has not been any unified solution available there are systems that are not talking to each other earlier what was happening they were working in silos with this solution with this cloud modernization we are trying to unify the whole solution there is a centralized database and the whole all the applications and all the mobile apps and all the web portals are unified through the centralized database the database we are we are using uh, cloud platforms to support our development initiatives and we are using state of the art technology for better performance and scalability optimization for this unified solution following fishery stakeholder we are trying to affect the feed companies hatcheries the fisher fishermen and the farmers the processors the food processors the fish processors and exporters the financial institutions the insurance companies and the government i've already talked about this process so the typical problems that we are meeting here is the demand supply mapping there is a clear through the business business intelligence dashboard there is a clear picture of what is the demand what is the supply at one dashboard and one one system increase market linkages and better price for the farmers route optimization 
traceability, better payment management, the complete ERP platform with procurement, sales, inventory, and all the uh, aspects completely handled online, and in the end, better business intelligence and better management. Again, a quick snapshot. Farmer is having a farmer mobile app. At the hub level, we have these modules of procurement, inventory, fleet, stock overview, sales, quality control, accounting, management dashboards. There's a driver mobile app that driver uses to collect the food. At the retailer level, we have the order management system, POS app, inventory management, invoice management, delivery boy app, and management. And for the end consumer, there's an e-commerce portal from where you can you can buy the produce at click of a button. There's an e-commerce app that you can use to purchase, which is hyper-local enabled in the sense that whenever we, whenever he makes an order, it automatically reaches the nearest retailer and it saves the logistics and time. Now, talking about the business model in the farm to plate. So under the PMMSY scheme in the Andhra Pradesh, there was a 40% subsidy provided for the general category and 60% was provided for the SCST and the women category for the infrastructure, for the equipments and for the logistics. So if I am a business owner and I want to start the aquaculture business, I can get subsidy from the center to construct these hubs and make all the necessary arrangements. This is a great, great relief for the aquaculture sector for the entrepreneurs because they face a lot of problem a lot of nobody wants to take risk because it's a difficult sector to work in but with this vision of government to boost inland fisheries and cultured fisheries and providing this relief of subsidies the entrepreneurs are coming today there are a lot of entrepreneurs in Andhra Pradesh who are coming and are becoming part of the system they have enrolled them on the platform a lot of farmers have come onto the system. More than 5,000 farmers are already using the system. I won't say that is a big number, but that's a decent number because bringing farmer to the platform is another, another challenge. A lot of education, training, hand holding, and convincing goes into bringing farmer on the, on the platform. But we have had a very good experience in the last one year. We have tried to address a lot of challenges, although not all the problems are solved, but a lot of them we have understood and tried to solve. The benefits at the government level, the industry is booming, entrepreneurs are coming for registering into the system. There is a quality establishment from end to end under the marketing, under the Fish Andhra marketing scheme, under the Fish Andhra initiative. There's a boost in the entrepreneurship. There's a boost in the local employment. There's a transparent business and economical growth. There's better decision support, planning, using business intelligence. Availability of quality producers avail at the doorstep of people, people's houses, people's homes. Nutritional benefits compared to other meat products through shrimps and fish. For the hub owners, the subsidy is playing a great role. The bank loans are playing a great role. And the IT platform is actually a big enabler for the, for the whole ecosystem. So talking about our vision, what we are thinking about in the next phases, we are trying to address the pre-harvest problems using IoT sensors that can track the water levels, that can track the water pH, water temperature, water quality, salinity, weather conditions. All of this information can be fed to a blockchain enabled system. And once this information is captured into the blockchain, it is immutable. You cannot change the information. Obviously, then the consumer, what it gets in the end is complete trust that whatever information he is viewing is true and it's not maligned in any sense. So traceability using blockchain is the biggest use case that we are trying to solve in the next phases. We are also now creating farm management tools, so farm ERP for the farmer, where he can get the input linkages, seeds, feeds, information about the hatcheries, information about the government policies, water testing facilities, and so on. Also, 
getting access to the research lab feedback on the water, soil, and shim quality. Next, after this data has been gathered from the farmer level, from the pre-harvesting side, we are using machine learning and artificial intelligence concepts and algorithms for better predictions and demand forecasting. And we feed this information into our farm to create intelligent supply chain systems to make a big difference. I just spoke about the IoT-based pre-harvest automation system with the farm monitoring tools to gather information. So this is a snapshot of how it's happening. The weather conditions are captured, the water conditions are captured, and there's a detailed dashboard showing the real-time fish monitoring, real-time temperatures they are kept in, all of those things. And in the end, we would want to create a digital marketplace, an integrated e-platform for farmers, where all the ecosystem has been streamlined, where all the players are unified, the feed companies, the hatcheries, healthcare, finance, water testing facilities, and other areas, with the aqua farms, the processing plants, and the exports. A complete end-to-end -end digitization of all the stakeholders is the next and the end game for our solution. Talking about the other emerging technologies for aquaculture in which we are constantly doing our research and we are constantly working. So there are a lot of fish robot facilities available now, 3D printing in aquaculture, which can capture the fish motion and movements. And using these motion and movements, we can understand how the species are behaving inside the water, which can be a very useful tool to help and understand how fishes behave. We are using drones in aquaculture, both above and below the water, to monitor offshore fish farming and can take a lot of tasks that can currently require specialized and expensive human interventions. So drones can reduce a lot of human intervention and human labor in inspection and damages, in inspection, the diseases and so on. Augmented reality is another area in the aquaculture where it can be used for teaching and inst instructional purposes. You can wear the, the cameras, the augmented reality cameras, and you can learn how the fishes move. You can learn a lot of things. You can have a virtual experience of how the fishes are moving inside the water. And you can learn a lot from that. You can, you can teach about fish welfare, disease prevention, and the dangerous working conditions. Also, the IoT sensors and blockchain, as I've already pointed about, which capture the water quality, weather quality, and so on. A lot of new initiatives are coming up, like biosensors are coming, that can also measure oxygen levels. Even the heart rate and metabolism can be measured, can also detect fish hunger levels at ground level. That can monitor water quality and uses ultraviolet transmission to disinfect water of pathogens and provide clean aquaculture production facilities. Blockchain is helping in maintaining immutability of data and help in complete food traceability food use cases. Maintaining quality parameters on blockchain will instill consumer trust and they will buy. And the quality and value of our produce will also be of export grade. Our exports will also increase if we use blockchain and IoT based technologies. In artificial intelligence, the aquaculture decision making a big problem. When we have all the data, we can use the data for better decision making. A lot of cases, farmers do not understand the language. There are a lot of language barriers. So we are trying to bring natural language processing systems where farmers can talk in their local languages in their natural dialects and, the, and talk to the systems rather than feeding the data into the system and trying to use the applications. Yield and early disease prediction and advisories can be tackled by AI very effectively. Feed optimization, harvest optimization, recommendations of water quality management, remote monitoring, health monitoring, demand forecast, predicting fish quality using image recognition. So images can capture fish's real-time image and they can tell the health of the fish, the quality of the fish. So the quality can be automated. Employing AI and computer vision to count and size organisms such as shrimp larvae and technology behind facial recognition 
to understand fish behavior, determine when fish are ready to feed. So there are a lot of lot of use cases available in this coming technology area, which can actually create a great impact in the aquaculture sector. Our application technology stack is low code platforms, open source platforms. We are using hyper automation platforms like robot process automation, workflow automation, machine learning and AI. The business insights engineering, we're using big data applied with data science, data lakes and business intelligence dashboards. The security, we are using cloud based platforms, we're using vulnerability and penetration testing for the testing standards and so on. These are some of the snapshots of the application that we have developed. Farm to Hub ERP, having the procurement, sales, inventory, accounting, fleet, and quality control. This is the Farmer mobile app, which is developed for both iOS and Android platform. The farmer can do the order management, price management, approvals, quality approvals, quality certificate. You can also upload when the harvest is ready. Complete profile and pond information can also be managed. And all, to all is this real-time synchronization. There is a retailer point of sales app where uh, there's real-time synchronization, retailer order, inventory management, price management, payment gateway integration is there. It's both supported in both online and offline mode. Easy to easy collect, click and collect functionalities available. And it's a high speed point of sales platform. This is the driver app, which I was talking about driver app and the fleet management. When the driver goes to the farmer and collects the produce, you can see that the same can be seen on the Google map from where he goes to which farmer he goes, how he collects and brings the produce to the warehouses. And the live feed tracking facility is also available and live fee live fleet distance calculation is also available. So, Coming to some of the business intelligence dashboards, we can see the procurement summary report, indent summary report, retailer summary report, sales summary report, closing stock summary report. This is the information provided to the government officials where they can track it on daily basis on all these statistics. <clears throat> we can see the district level performance from select, we can select a particular district and the date and it can give us all the data, all the purchases, all the procurements, all the sales at the district levels. We can also see the monthly level, monthly trend of total procured value. We can also see which districts are performing the best. We can see the hub wise procured value percentage and procurement details. We can also get the retailer ranking, which retailers are doing the best businesses and ranking them in the order district wise total sales hub wise total sales and retailer wise total sales can also be seen in the application another interesting point is price comparison the government official can see what was the hub landing price at what price the hub procured from the farmer then at what price the retailer procured from the hub and then at what price the consumer actually purchased so in one case, when I talk about Katla fish, which is a very common fish in Andhra Pradesh, we can see it, it was purchased at 121 rupees, sold to the hub at 131, to the retailer at 131 and to the consumer at 168. So the government can get a complete transparency on the pricing that happens from one point to the other. So hyperlocal e-commerce platform, I've already told, hyperlocal e-commerce mobile app, which are using advanced features, keyword based features. We're also trying to use augmented reality here where we can scan the fish and we can tell which fish, fish it is from the AI machine learning use cases. This is the delivery boy app for handling the orders from retailer to the consumers. The delivery boy can be created, mapped to the order it goes similar to fleet management. This is a delivery for the end consumers. So that was all about the farm to plate platform. And in the end, I would be very happy to collaborate with Shobit University and the Ardo group, the African Asian Rural Development Organization. 
in taking this initiative forward with the asian and african countries wherever we can they can they can support in the pilot capacities and i think with the help of with the help and guidance of professor moni we can definitely definitely mark a great difference in this whole aquaculture ecosystem do the knowledge transfer and implement a pilot for these nations i would be very happy to be part of this initiative and i'm have very i was i'm very happy to give a talk about it uh where i can share all my ideas all my views and all my experiences that i've experienced in this aquaculture sector under this fish andhra initiative thank you thank you so much sir for for the time so i think you are on mute i cannot hear you So I uh, I think we cannot hear you, sir. You are on on mute. Sorry. And hello. Yes. Yeah. Yes, sir. Now I. Can. Thank you very much for your technology insightful presentation. Thank you so much, sir. Yeah, a computer science person worked in informatics area presenting a fisheries value chain project operationalized. Right. Sir. At the grassroots level with the help of a state of Andhra Pradesh and telling them that this is what you can achieve and also how we can go further with respect to scalability and adopting all the available technology framework as of now. Right. Sir. Making the latest state of the uh, state of the art technology at the grassroots level. A person who was involved in the district level computerization, state level computerization, and national level computerization, and then and the agriculture sector as a system, as a sector, and also giving up to the recommendation up to the doubling farmers' income, and then establishing five centers of excellence to work for information technology digitalization for the you know rural area, because of the simple reason that. If technology is adopted in the rural area for rural management, this can add $1.8 trillion to the existing GDP. This is what told by the chairman of Hindustan Inu in 2012. So now add all inflation of the dollars. Right, sir. So we, could, we should cross $10 trillion economy. If honesty prevails in this country at the grassroots level, if uh, you know dedication you know prevails in the country at the grassroots level and the agriculture sector farmers or you know works with and everything should go to their farm steps farm level and uh, farmers level and farmer and farm are treated as an asset not the agriculture department not to the district level agricultural department block level agriculture department it is a farm and farmer have to be, uh, you know, considered as an asset on which every value chain has to come out. So this is how I have been, you know, you know, voicing for more than four decades. I'm very happy. A person who put the first seed in 1987 under the district level program, district information system on fisheries and fishnet. And then, you know, that, you know, IT for agriculture development to 15 informatics network blueprint. And then getting into that seven mission board programs for doubling the farmer's income. And then when, you know, the report has been submitted, then as, a, as an author who has written that report as a group leader, then I thought that as a farmer technocrat, 
And now as a professor emeritus, let me use the laptop and internet connectivity and the university you know, platform to communicate to the whole world. So I initiated two webinar series. Whether anybody wants to hear or not, this is what India can provide. People always say that in this country, two people are working, Modi is working and Modi is working. Uh -huh. MODA and MONI. The, you know, the energy level is same. I'm not, I, I'm not, I, I'm purposefully saying this statement. And I also would like to say that on December 11th, the chairman of All India Council of Technical Education, after we completed the 54th edition of each webinar series, 108, 108 number, it is valuable. And the university conducted a national webinar, a national seminar on, a national conference on strengthening the vision of Honorable Prime Minister Shri Narendra Modi through Knowledge Creation Network, through that, you know, two webinar series. And, and that one, Dr. Anil, uh, Professor Anil Sachsarabudhi, Chairman of the All India Council of Technical Education, said it, that we are very happy that a professor, emeritus, and a former director general is doing a wonderful job by generating knowledge, by bringing in experts from India and abroad to the Soviet Institute of Engineering and the Technology deemed to be university platform on a problem which India wants to have solutions. So, and I'm very happy that I thought that as a senior citizen, as a retired person, as a professor, emeritus, I should do to this country for the grassroots level. And today I felt so happy, Mr. Sharma, from my bottom of my heart, that what I wanted to do it in 87, and that time technology was not available, but we were very strong in information system as a computer science person, m -tech computer science from IIT Chennai, 76, 78 batch. And I was so happy today to see to that even Fishnet proposal was submitted to the government. And there was a talk, a uh, national workshop in 2009, you know, January 21, exactly the date the workshop was conducted. And National Fisheries Development Board was the then CEO, Dr. Krishnaya, an IAS officer from Andhra Kader. He said that National Fisheries Development Board will operationalize fishnet in the country. Till now, nothing has happened. And then now today, 63 startups are working in fisheries area. And then I, during the, you know, I have been voicing that, you know, there has to be a fisheries informatics program to train the people, all the, you know, rural areas, students from rural area, engineers from rural area, and the agriculture science graduates and postgraduate students who would like to get into income generation activities. So fisheries, agricultural informatics, in particular, fisheries informatics. Today, after listening to you, after the way in which you have done it as a computer science person, an organization working in e-governance program and do and operationalized in, in a fisheries value chain, intelligent value chain, done it, and also having an action plan to bring in the emerging technology I think this is an apt for is an important area that you know these uh, you know the you know the uh, Akiko Infotech company and the Soviet Institute of Engineering Technology to work together to launch. We have already launched MTech in informatics and e-governance, and also that MTech in agricultural informatics, especially in fisheries informatics, and this can be a case tool, case study to train the students to take up this, you know, this uh, tool and go and work with 21,000 primary fisher cooperative societies. Each society has got more than one, you know, it has got about something like 34 lakh people. And fisheries, you know, the fisheries value chain is a one value chain, which gives if 33 lakh people are working in collecting the fish, catching the fish, and it gives an additional employment of 66 lakhs, one is to two. And this much potential is there as an organized sector, but about more than, you know, that, you know, you know about 20 million people are involved in fisheries, you know, fishing community involved in this uh, activity. And inland fisheries is a sustainable and it can bring in more value chain. 
more foreign la foreign exchange and uh, it is very important that's why i thought that i should give this information on fishing you know fishery sector at a glance and you also understood and you also talked about that i am very happy about that is not like developing code i am very happy that as a ceo you understood the subject and now operationalized system at the grassroots level and i as a person who worked in this field for more than 42 year 45 years now i am very happy that such systems are scalable in nature not only nationally but regionally you know and globally and uh, i will be very happy that if you if your organization and the, these two centers of excellence five centers of excellence if you can work together maybe in the june in the month of june july we can even launch the course even a three months diploma program six months diploma program to attract the students even even to the government officials specialist officers and you know and uh, and uh, icr institutions who are working in the fisheries you know research and so on and so forth and we should work together and bring it out in a fisheries sector transformation in the country it is essential and because of the traceability problem you know that tuna even in the lashadiv area one area we have not even exploited you not more than 15% because the companies are not going over there it's far away and even the bay of bengal hilsa is in one variety and there is no blockchain you know traceability lot of potentials are available then you within the inland fisheries and so much water bodies and we should bring in some sort of a best practices adopted best of package of practices good fisheries practices and meeting the global standard and and uh, uh, you know last month a professor from karnataka animal husbandry uh, animal science and veterinary science animal and veterinary science and fisheries science you know professor talked from mangalore the situation in india is that a shoe is put it in the showroom whereas a fish which gives a nutrition value is being sold putting on the sand near the drainage this situation has to change and the fish which is being brought up you know is being catched you know being caught in you know places of production it has to travel from that place as a process to one in a you know highly hygienic conditions india economy is emerging and uh, you know every uh, you know the commodities of primary commodities have to be processed you know and it has the valued product has to go to the consumer then only the farmers farmer producer organization producer organization people in the value chain and with the e-commerce you know can facilitate the farming community in a very big manner and i am very happy that mr sharma that we have been talking for the last four months but today you have done wonders for the webinar series farm to plate with the technology i am very happy about it thank, thank you, you very sir. much but mr nallakannu was mr nallakannu is online now i think he was facing some problem he is in the field and he is and he is he is not in a position to connect it but we will connect him he is one of the very big seafood exporter and he is working with a lot of our fish farmers in andhra pradesh and uh, you know and it is i i wish he joined today but he has a connectivity problem issues so with this i would like to hear from you your final word and then i will close the webinar mr sharma so whatever you just said i completely and completely agree with every point that you said that we really need to focus on the pain areas really need to focus on the challenges like you mentioned about the quality you mentioned about the hygiene you mentioned about empowering the farmers you mentioned about empowering the business owners to come forward and take up these initiatives of becoming the aquapreneurs and i th- i see a great future of the whole aquaculture sector if soon we have adopted digital technologies 
in india we have a good talent pool who understands technologies we have amazing science uh, scientific researchers we have amazing infrastructure in the coming time we have amazing water resources available weather conditions available for aquaculture so there is not one thing that's not available we have everything we just need to connect the dots and i am very hopeful and in, in that in the coming time we will definitely mark a big difference in the aquaculture sector as a whole Th thank you very much mr sharma and uh, i also would like to inform you that uh, today you know none of the computer science departments those who teach computer science and computer application never bother about agriculture as a use case yes. they would like to prepare people and then send it to corporates and agri and they used to teach artificial intelligence but india is being an agrarian economy neither iits nor nits nor triple its or nor uh, central universities or not universities state universities never bother about that they should concentrate on indian indian economy which is agrarian economy they would like to produce people for uh, you know western countries you know as 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 uh, you know uh, btech students and b students and when i was addressing in one uh, conference at chennai one professor asked me professor mon you were talk about so much for it in agriculture and they were working as a technocrat for the so many years but farmer does do not want to put their sons and daughters in farming in farming i asked them where from you are she's she's from a premier university from tamil nadu i told him that tamil nadu is an agrarian economy and you are from a farm you know premier institution computer science professor and if you don't want to understand agriculture as a sector and if you don't want to do research in application of it in agriculture sector you produce a student for corporate sector and you are you are once again after listening to my talk whereas the director from samsung r&d says that professor mori we have got influenced by your talk and we were selling mobile to the retailers and but you would have also built up applications along with this like agriculture sector then we would be doing wonders but as a professor you are saying that farmer son do they don't want to put their son and daughter for agriculture i'm surprised we are not doing a good job we are not doing we are not educating the people we are not undertaking research in the agriculture sector we teach theory but we don't want to use agriculture as a use case until unless all the higher educational institutions irrespective of what they teach to generate you know people prepare for clerical jobs in the country they should do research work in the agriculture sector it is not only confined to icar and agriculture university agriculture is an indian you know india is an agrarian economy and uh, it can produce it is still the the top most sector to provide employment opportunity and if this is done technologies i invented technologies adopted and if it is a technology enabled you know agriculture system value chain then india will be providing food to the whole world india will be a healthier nation and rural india will be in a wealthier nation and i am very happy that today that you know you your case study as an it company and uh, you have put it that uh, working with the government this is a real case study right that you know it is not this is a real e governance not what all they do for the bureaucrats to get benefit out of you know computerization is it's is is not e governance e governance means how we facilitate the last people at the last mile people live in the villages not in the urban area that's why i thought that you know that you know when i talked about that you know the first agriculture marketing information system way back in 2000 we were able to network 3500 agriculture wholesale mandis in the country out of 7000 from 2000 to 2008 having 
you know market prices it was uh, using dial up connectivity and that time internet was not available it was the first e governance program outside of the government building in the country at marknet when enam was announced in 2014 i walked from building to office to office that please network with akmartnet akmartnet is price efficiency and uh, enam is marketing efficiency this has to meet together and uh, it is very important but still enam is struggling with the 700 mondays whereas when with through the dial up connectivity we were able to network 3500 wholesale mondays you know way back in 2008 from 2000 so it's a very important thing that i am very happy that today's talk will generate a lot of you know motivations and to bring in this system scaled up to the gram panchayat level and uh, let us work together let us sign an mou between the university and the you know your uh, you know your company to work on this fisheries value chain and also get into some diploma courses based on this your your tool as a case tool thank you very much sure, would you like to say something no i was just saying would be more than happy to be associated sir thank you very much thank you with this i will close the webinar and uh, we we'll leave the studio thank you very much sure sir. i thank Morning. honorable chancellor of the university and his excellency secretary general ardo and honorable vice chancellor and faculty members for you know facilitating to contact the international webinar series on open source digital technology towards self reliant india and thank you very much and with this we'll leave the studio and uh, close the webinar thank you very much thank you thank you sir